So now uh, I'll, I'll tell, uh, I'll talk to you about an application of how I did it in one of my studies. All right. So we were interested, um, you know, as we know, obesity and diabetes um, uh, are on the rise. Uh, and um, we wanted to know, uh, you know, what happens in, if there are interventions that we need to focus more, um, just because we noticed that there, is a there are major efforts that have been conducted by Los Angeles County uh, to curb the epidemic. But, you know, uh, somehow it's still on the rise. We need to figure out what is the best way to do it. So we wanted to evaluate the potential impact and long-term effectiveness of environmental and behavioral public health interventions uh, on type 2 diabetes. Here, what we did, we first talked to, uh, you know, uh, researchers to kind of come up with like a causal diagram. Now, as you can see here on the left side here, uh, a very complex one that involves a lot of behaviors, a lot of environmental variables, and a lot of outcomes here. Uh, and we put all of that into a model. We define then the different attributes, like this is the graphics, age, sex, race, socioeconomic status, different behaviors like physical activity, fast food consumption, fruit, fresh fruit and vegetables, and the outcome of interest, you know, body mass index and type of diabetes. We wanted to particularly focus on Los Angeles County because it's one of the most populous counties, but also very diverse. And because there, were, there, there is a lot of um, uh, effort initiatives that have been poured out into Los Angeles County. So we wanted to really see where uh, these things could lead to success, right? And we have uh, also decision rules. Uh, we use here, um, uh, again, uh, being a microestimation model, uh, we use uh, regression-based uh, decision rules. Uh, for example, type 2 diabetes was predicted or was a function of the demographics, uh, your previous diet and physical activity, your previous body mass index, as well as your family history of type 2 diabetes. And we decided to simulate about a tenth of the population of uh, Los Angeles County, uh, which is about 100,000 uh, people. We followed them for, you know, uh, from zero to about 65 years. All right, so here, this is just like a sketch out of what data will look like. Uh, we have different individuals with different age characteristics, different sex characteristics, different race, uh, physical activity, physical, uh, fast food consumption, body mass index, and type 2 diabetes. And we basically follow people from time one, to, from time zero to time nine, basically from birth to middle of uh, adulthood uh, between 60 to 65. We're gonna see what would happen and transpire uh, at the end of follow-up. All right, so what we did, we undertook a systematic review of the literature and we analyzed some internal data, uh, like the, the WIC uh, database. Uh, we also uh, uh, use data that are publicly available, like from the American Community Survey, uh, the World Health Organization, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. We use meta-analysis uh, by doing some literature review, and we classify these evidence, and we chose the one that we thought were the best ones that we presented uh, in certain effect estimates. And then we extracted the means, the proportion, the standard deviation, the correlation, the association, and regression measures. Next. We calibrated the model. Again, remember what we were talking about, the fine tuning to find the right uh, signal uh, so that we can have a, a model that will reflect reality. And that's what we did. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, you can uh, see here that uh, the dotted line are a simulated line, the, the plain line are the observed line. So, I mean, we didn't do uh, you know, a terrible job, I think, but I think, uh, you know, overall, I think the uh, calibration uh, worked a little bit. So we're ha happy that uh, what we have in uh, input into the model uh, start, sort of reflects reality. Okay, many experiments. So we designed different types of, in, uh, of, uh, of experiments. So first, as you can imagine, um, we have different scenarios here. Uh, the natural course is the first line, for example, you know, uh, green is the desired level of a particular behavior, and red is the desired, is the less desirable level of a particular behavior. And we said, okay, let's see what would happen if we were to have an optimistic scenario where everyone would have a desired level, uh, also a pessimistic, pessimistic scenario where no one will actually have the desired level, and so on and so forth. Sometimes we did it for a particular time uh, during the life course, and sometimes we did it uh, at, at, at other times. And this is important because we want to define uh, the different uh, treatment regimen that we want to evaluate. Okay, so uh, we uh, found a couple of things. Uh, uh, and as you can imagine, uh, there are some that were uh, effective, uh, but not all were effective. For example, 
Um, we have uh, things uh, like uh, engaging in physical activity, uh, uh, reducing uh, fast food consumption, uh, and combining all the interventions together uh, actually seem to be effective at reducing uh, the uh, incidence of uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, so this is great uh, because we can inform now policy, okay, maybe this is where you need to invest more of your money because uh, it seems to be having more of an impact there. Okay, and the last step here, uh, we, we did what we call again, a simple analysis, where basically we run the simulation model multiple times. Here we did it a hundred times just because of computational power. And then we, across those hundred uh, simulations, we basically summarize, we get a point estimated and a confidence and interval. And that's basically how we quantify our uncertainty about the process. Basically in each time we roll the, we roll the dice and uh, we have the parameters are selected from uh, a sample from appropriate public distribution. All right, so simulation models are very important, uh, as you can tell, um, and they allow to create a virtual laboratory where we can test uh, hypothetical experiments over time. And um, uh, as far as this uh, particular research that I was just presenting, uh, it, it did sh uh, uh, shed light on some things that we may need to emphasize a little more, like promoting physical activity, uh, in implementing uh, intervention in combination and throughout the life course at every critical uh, life stage.